Welcome back to Way of the Wrench and on today's very special episode I'm going to show you how to deal with a very common problem that you're going to encounter when you start installing tables. Now some of these tables will be very quiet, you can barely hear them, some of them are too loud, some of them the surround sound feedback is so aggressive that the exciters are causing tilt issues and you can't play the game. Meanwhile some the exciters are so quiet you can't even hear anything. So we're going to fix that by installing two different programs today. We're going to install Pinval and Equalizer APO. So let's get started. All right, so before we get started here, it's always nice to acknowledge the people that have done all the hard work before us here that we're gonna try today. So a special thank you to Michael Roberts of mgrnet.org. Uh, he's the guy who created Pinball and also the Virtual Pinball Bible. If you haven't checked that out and you're making a pinball cabinet, go check it out. Uh, another thank you as well for MR Loofer for the actual SSF capabilities for Pinball as well. So let's talk about Pinball. Now, what does Pinball do? Well, first off, it allows you to raise the volume of everything up or down. It allows you to change the individual tables volumes up or down. It allows you to change the music, the strength of your rear exciters, the strength of your front exciters, up or down. It allows you to mute everything in case you gotta take a phone call or something. It also allows you to have a night mode where you can preset the volume to a lower level so that you're not waking people up in the house. And then to top it all off, when you exit a table, it actually saves it. And the next time you open it up, it's exactly how you set it. How cool is that? So I've got a table loaded up here. It's Taxi. It's kind of the least amount of music that I could find. So I hopefully don't have any copyright issues with YouTube here. Now, uh, with Pinvol, the idea is trying to make it so that you can make all these changes just with the buttons on your pinball cabinet instead of having to grab a keyboard. So for example, if I want to change my volume for the global, so everything up or down, I hold in this button here, my extra ball button, which now turns into a shifted key. And now I can raise the global volume up or I can make it go all the way down. Now, if I want to change the table, I press in the key here, and on the right hand side, magnet save and flipper buttons, I can go table up, or I can make the table down to whatever I want. Now, the other things I can do on here is I can mute it, pressing this in and pressing a coin return. I can mute it, answer a telephone call if I need to. I can also go into night mode by holding the extra ball button in and pressing start. So you can hear that the volume has drastically gone down and you can set that volume level. And you can jump back. And then the other thing you can do is I've set up another button to do shifted. So if I hold in my launch ball button, I can change my left and right flippers are gonna be for my front exciters. So you can hear those getting quieter and quieter or we can go up with them. And you can hear quite a big difference. So these are really great in case you're having exciters being too hard on a certain table and it is triggering your uh, tilt to happen and the game is becoming unplayable. Okay, and those are the front exciters. Uh, pop bumpers and stuff, we're gonna control with our right hand buttons. So I can go up and down with those. You're not gonna hear the difference there because it's gotta be the rear stuff, so the pop bumpers and things like that. And also, if I push the start button, I can change the music volume up for the ROM. Or I can go with this button and go, go down with it. So, make changes pretty much infinitely on this. And then, like I said, when you exit a table, it instantly saves it so that the next time you go in there, it will be saved. All right, now that we know what Pinvol can do, let's go ahead and start installing this stuff. Okay, before you edit any of your tables using Pinvol, I highly recommend that you adjust the ROM volume first. So open up your coin door and do the volume plus until you get about 28 or 29 volume. Uh, don't go all the way to the end, otherwise it's gonna sound horrible and, and it's gonna be worse when you start amplifying that. Now, if you don't have a coin door like mine and you're using keyboard, press the end key to initiate the coin door and then it's uh, eight and nine on the keyboard to raise the volume up and down. Right, so the very first thing we need to do is we're gonna download Equalizer APO. So just hop on to Google, 
Type in Equalizer APO and SourceForge. And this is the site right here. And then go ahead and download this. Okay, once you've got that downloaded, just go show in folder. And we're going to copy it from here. And let's kind of keep everything kind of contained here a little bit. And let's go this PC, C drive, V pinball, and we will put it in here with everything for pinball. All right, now we're going to open this up and do the install on Equalizer APO. Click yes on this. Okay, and this should be pretty easy. We're just going to go through the steps here. Click next. Click agree. Sign your life away here. Okay, so you don't actually need any kind of shortcuts for this. So we could just do that. Do install. Okay, now it's going to ask us which devices do you want uh, Equalizer APO to work on. Really, we got all these TVs here, but we're not using the TVs. We are all putting through everything through this USB sound device. So we're going to put it on that one there. And since there is another speakers here, we could put it on that as well. But we really only use the USB sound device in this setup because that is my 7.1 surround sound StarTech. But this will just have options to be able to control whatever else this is. Okay, it gives you a little heads up that you can change anything by opening this configure rator.exe after if you want. Okay, uh, let's do a reboot now. Okay, the next thing we have to do is go to where we just installed Equalizer APO. So File Explorer, this PC, C drive, Program Files. There's Equalizer APO, and then right in this folder here, it says config. I'm going to open this up. And then in this config.txt file, we need to make a change. Now, there is a bug in this program that if you don't have a blank space in here, sometimes that can mess you up. So, uh, and I did have this running without this blank, but we're going to put it in just because it doesn't really affect anything. Uh, if you put it in anyway. So add a space and then at the very end here we need to type a line and it needs to be right at the end. Make sure that you write it exactly how I'm writing it here. So include pinball ssf.txt. Okay and then we're going to save this and close this out. Okay, now we actually need the Pinvol software. So I'm gonna put the links to everything we used in this video in the video description below. Uh, however, we need to go to mgrnet.org and we are gonna scroll down here until you see his program called Pinvol. So we're gonna go in on that. Now, also the instructions on how to do everything we're doing in this video are here too. So if you need to refer to this uh, to get you going, that might be good too. So now, latest build is this one here. This is what we want right here. Okay, now we're gonna take this, show and folder. I'm gonna right click copy this. And we're gonna go back to my VIN, v pinball folder here and we're gonna plop it down here. And then because it's a zip file, I'm going to go right click properties and I'm going to check this unblock just in case something happens and it doesn't allow it to work properly on my computer. Press apply, press OK. All right, so we're going to open this up right here. I use 7-zip. And extract it to its own folder. OK, and then open up the folder. And there is the exe right here. Now. We want this to open automatically right when the computer starts up. So to do that, we need to make a shortcut here. So we're gonna right click on that and create shortcut. And then we're gonna copy this. Or we can even cut it because we don't want it here. And then to get it to go to our startup menu, you can press the Windows key plus R. And that will open up this run command box. And then you're gonna to wanna to type what I got right here, so shell 
colon startup. Press OK. So this folder here, anything that's put in this folder is going to start automatically when you turn your computer on. So we're going to paste shortcut for pinvol. Now, we don't necessarily want this opening up and kind of interrupting with our baller installer that is going to automatically open up. So we can right click on this and go down to properties. And where it says run, with normal window, it'll pop up and interfere. And we don't need that. We can just minimize it. So we'll do that. Press apply, press OK. Yeah, okay, then we can close this up. Now, before you start adjusting anything in Pinvol, I highly recommend that you go down here and make sure that your speakers are 100% for the computer. That way you can scale everything down from there. Now, to make any changes, we just have to open up Pinvol, double left click, and you will have this pop up. Now, I'm not gonna go through absolutely everything in here. Uh, there's some key things that you need to know and uh, lots of things that you may not even have to use. So uh, first off, right off the bat, you can see that the Equalizer APO is installed successfully. So we've got the SSF in here. Um, we've got global volume. These are going to be kind of your sets that when you open up Pinvol and open up your Baller Installer, what you set here is going to be the starting points and then you'll be able to adjust them later uh, once you've got it going. Starting at the very top, you've got global volume. Now this is going to be tables and all programs that are open with Pinvol. So I recommend you put that at 100%. And then once you have it going in the cabinet, you can scale that down and it will save for whatever program you're using as well. Uh, so table volume, this is going to be for each individual tables. Once again, I think I would start right up at 100% and that way you're kind of getting the max volume and you can always scale it down and have it save later. Uh, default table volumes, we could put that up at 100% too and just adjust them when we put in new tables. Now, your SSF gain, I would start with no gain at all. You can always come back in here if you find that it's limiting or it needs a bit more oomph. Um, so just start with those at zero. Now let's talk about these really cool functions here. So for global volume keys, you are deciding what kind of key combination that is entered here is going to allow the global volume to go up or to go down or to trigger night mode, which is a reduced volume that you can instantly set it to and save it to so that you just hit two keys and then it's instantly quieter for nighttime play. And then another setup for muting all volume in case you need to make a phone call, something like that. Now all of these preset keyboard combinations are already in here and so that you can figure out what you need to press to be able to get this to work. However, this is using a keyboard to do this. So for this video, I'm gonna get you guys working and functioning properly with just the keyboard. And then I'm gonna make a video shortly up on using x Powder to be able to use just the buttons on your cabinet and uh, being able to change these key combos in here to be able to get it the way you want it. So this is for the global volume stuff. Then you've got your per table things. So uh, being able to press another couple key combos to be able to make it go up or down. And then you have your SSF as well. So you've got your back glass, which is your music uh, to go up and down. You've got your rear exciters, so your pop bumpers and things like that. And you got your front exciters for things like your flippers. Now, these are awesome because you're gonna have tables that maybe the SSF is too powerful and it's causing tilt issues and you can't even play it. So you'll be able to adjust them down. And then you'll have a table that's too quiet and same thing, you'll be able to adjust those exciters up and get it sounding really, really awesome and, and have it save for you when you exit the table as well. The bottom half of this page, uh, you can read what it does. If you're finding something's not working for your different setups, you can just check these off. Um, one that I found was very good is I want this checked off to make sure that when you make changes that you can actually see little kind of like TV volume kind of overlay pop up so you can see what you're doing. And then if you're having some issues, uh, try checking this one off because it will show you every time a new table pops up or a new application or program and uh, it should pop up and show you uh, when that opens up and if it's working properly. But once you get it all working, you can uncheck this one. That way it's only uh, when you're actually making changes. All right, at this point, Pinvol is ready to go. You can minimize this and open up a Pinvol table and you get a keyboard and you can do these key combinations on your keyboard to do any of these volumes up and downs for your exciters and your back glass and your table volumes and global volumes and all that stuff. 
Now this program wasn't written to be functioning like that. The idea was that you were able to make some shift keys on some rarely used buttons on your pinball cabinet and then have those button presses equal what are in these boxes to be able to do the same functions and that way you wouldn't need a keyboard. So in the next video I'm going to show you how to download and install a program called XPatter which is going to allow us to take some buttons on the cabinet, turn them into shifted functions and have those buttons turn into keyboard strokes that we have decided in here to be able to have all the pinball functions happen by just pressing buttons on the pinball cabinet itself. If you don't like the key combinations that are here, you can change them. And that's the whole idea of when you get the buttons figured out what those keyboard presses are gonna be, then you can go in here and change them to your suiting. So if we don't like Windows F10, you just left click on it and it's going to ask you to hold one of these buttons. That's kind of giving you the key combinations that you're allowed to use. So if we do the windows, and then we press a key on the keyboard to get it to work. So for example, I'm gonna say uh, Windows P for right now, just as an example. And then uh, that will now be the key combination for global volume up. Now, when you are changing these, just keep in mind that Windows P might have other functions, either in Windows operating system, it might pop a window up in Windows, or uh, that combination might mean something else in Visual Pinball or in Future Pinball or whatever you're trying to run. So just keep that in mind. Uh, once you've settled on these key combinations, you may want to try them in all the programs and make sure that doesn't interfere with anything. So I'm going to just put this back here and we're going to put Windows F10. So let's minimize this and so we've got one more thing to do uh, inside of Pinup Popper. Okay, the other thing we have to do is we have to open up our Pinup Popper config and we need to make a change in here. So we're gonna go up to Popper Setup, then we're gonna go to Global Config. Okay, and then you're gonna go to Script. Okay, and I've already written this into my Pinup Popper. Uh, right here, you're gonna wanna type this out, volume change equals zero. Uh, make sure that it's uh, case sensitive exactly how it is here. And what this will do is it will prevent Pinup Popper from adjusting the volume in between tables and when you pop back and out of tables, uh, which it likes to do. Uh, and if you don't put this in here, you're gonna have your pinball settings getting changed all over the place. So just write that in and then that will stop that from happening. Okay, and then you just make sure you save it. And to try this out and make sure it all worked, we can exit it and launch it. Just using the key combinations that were already put in Pinvol, we had Windows F10. So there you go, there's our global volume up. And F9 should be down for global volume. So you can see, you can just hold it and get whatever that volume you need on there. Windows F7 is gonna to be to toggle night mode, or to go back. And then Windows F8 is muted. Perfect, so this is working great. So go ahead and give this a try on your tables. And like I said, at this point in the video uh, series, this is just gonna get you to be able to use Pinvol to be able to adjust your table volumes how you like it using a keyboard. And when you exit the table, it will all save. Uh, that way next time you open up that same table, it will be all saved exactly how you liked it. Now Visual Pinball is not the only application that Pinvol works with. It actually works with a lot of different applications, including your front end. So if you wanna change the volume up and down for Pinup Popper and have it save on the way out, it will totally let you do that. Now, that being said, one of the downsides to this is future pinball doesn't seem to work 100% with pinball. And I'll explain that in a second here. So when I couldn't get it to work with future pinball how it's supposed to be working, I spent about two, three weeks of my life trying to find the answer for you guys so that I could put all this into one video for you guys. And I didn't find it 100%, but I have some workarounds for you that I'd like to share with you guys so that if you have future pinball and you want it to work, this is what you can do. Okay, so through my research, I have found that there is some kind of forced screen exclusivity with future pinball that kind of doesn't allow anything in the back end to be noticed while you are playing future pinball. So at heart, I think that is the overall problem with this. If there's anybody out here that actually knows a solution to this, please post it down below in the comment section. I will add it to the front or the top of the video description so everyone can benefit from it. Now, because of that, there's a whole bunch of scenarios where this works or doesn't work. So the very first case scenario is that Pinvol does actually work like it's exactly intended to in a future pinball game. However, the overlay is not visible. 
Meaning that if you do what you would normally do to change the volume, it might not seem like anything's happening, but if you keep pushing the button, it will go down in volume and, and do all the things it's supposed to, but you just can't visually see that on an overlay popping up. So that's your first case scenario. Now, some future pinballs, maybe it's an older version, are allowing that to happen, but mine and my updated future pinball was not letting me do that at all. So, might work for you. Try it out. Okay, now if that first scenario isn't working for you and you're a lot like mine, you will not be able to get Pinval to work in game like it's supposed to. So you kind of need some workarounds. So this first workaround is that when you are loading a future pinball table for the first like one to five seconds while the table's loading, it will actually allow you to make the adjustments and you can see it on screen if you have selected to show the overlay during any kind of application change, which I'm gonna show you in a second where that check mark is. And like I said, depending on the table, you get about one to five seconds where you can actually make adjustments, but you can't really hear it yet because the table hasn't loaded. And once the table loads, those changes will be there, and when you exit, they will save. So let me show you the other checkbox so that you can kind of spot when the table actually pops up and says the table for like five seconds, you can adjust it. Okay, from your desktop, you're gonna go down to the little up arrow here, left click on it. Find the pinball icon, left click on it, and then you can go to show pinball window. And once this window pops up, right at the very bottom, there's a checkbox that says show when switching to a new table or application. You're gonna to wanna to click that on. And that simply means that anytime a new app or a new uh, front end or anything switching or changing, it will pop up the overlay uh, even if you don't push a button, that way you can see that it's changed to the new one. So this is going to allow us to see that pit, pin up popper is closed, the table is loading and you see the table actually load for a couple seconds and then it disappears. Those couple of seconds is when you're able to adjust it. So let's open up a table and show you that. Okay, so I'm gonna open up Retro Flare here in Future Pinball and when I open it, you're gonna see the overlay for Pinball pop up. It's gonna say something like System. So and I'm not sure what System is. Uh, it's not your front end. It might be considering the loading screen and that music that you can adjust, but they call it system. And then you're going to see future pinball for a brief second, and then you're gonna see the actual table name. And when you see the table name, until it disappears, that is the time that you were allowed to make any changes uh, with pinball, and it is not a lot of time. So let's see how long it is here. Okay, there's the system volume. There's future pinball, there's the table. So right there, what was that, two, three seconds? That's the only time that you are able to actually adjust the volume with this method. So some tables, it's a little longer, some are shorter, but um, usually it's not enough time to get any changes. However, if you, you can sneak a couple button presses in there if that's all you need. So every time you try a table here, it is going to create a table line in the pinvolltables.ini file here. So we're gonna start up aliens here. Let it do its thing. Okay, so now that we have started the table, we're gonna kick out here and there should be an entry in our pinball tables.ini. So we'll kick out back to our desktop here. Okay, so to change the .ini table file, you have to go from your desktop. You're gonna open up a Windows here. We're gonna go to this PC. C drive, V pinball, or really wherever your pinball has uh, been opened up. So for me, uh, my pinball is here. In this folder, you're gonna find a pinballtables.ini. So go ahead and open this, and it just opens up with, uh, you can go uh, open with, you can go to notepad. You can see right now, right there, there's a brand new line, uh, future pinball, aliens legacy. So these numbers here, represent the pinball volume settings that you're wanting to save. So this first one here is the table volume in percentage. This one here is also the table volume in percentage, but if you have a secondary device, which I don't. And then this one here is for the back glass music or the ROM music. And then this one is for the rear exciters and this one's for the front exciters. Now these three are in decibels, not percentage. So if you put five in there, that's five decibels up. If you got a negative five, there'd be negative five decibels. So since I can't change in game, I can go in here and I can modify these. And then uh, when it loads, it will have those in. So we could take this and put it down to 50%. And we could take these and turn them up to five. And 
And then before you exit, you're gonna make sure you save it. And you do need to close this out, otherwise Pinvol won't be able to access it. And then after this, you should be able to just load Alien Legacy up and see the differences. And if it's not exactly how you like it, you might just have to go back and forth a couple times. But that is a decent workaround for changing and saving your future pinball tables how you like them. I will give you another workaround. So rather than having the table up and trying to play it and doing the pinball adjustments then in a future pinball table, you can actually close out the table Go to your desktop and open up Future Pinball in the editor mode. And once you have the table loaded, Pinball will recognize that and you can take your time and make any changes you need to. It will save it on the way out and it will make those changes when you open up the table. You just won't be able to hear any of those changes while you're in editor mode, but you just have to go back and forth a couple times and once it's set, it'll be saved. So let me show you how to do that. You go to wherever you have Future Pinball installed. So for me, it's uh, C Drive, V Pinball, Future Pinball. You're going to open up the Future Pinball EXE, let it load up. Then you are going to load whatever table you're wanting to change. So let's say it's Alien Legacy. And then rather than starting and playing the table, just leave it in the editor. And if you'll notice that the overlay for Pinball popped up there. So uh, I can now go and change the table volume. I can change the night mode and adjust those volumes. I can do exciters up and down. I can do ROM volume, back glass up and down, and rear exciters. And then when you exit this out, it will save it. So that's another workaround for the future pinball tables. And once you get them set up the way you like it, you're not gonna be moving them around too much anyway. All right, there's a wrap on another video from Way the Wrench, this time on how to get equalizer APO and pinball working on your virtual pinball cabinet so that you can open up your tables, edit the volumes, edit the surround sound feedback exactly how you like it, and then kick out and have it saved so it'll play exactly the same next time you play it. If you have any questions about how to set this up or anything we did in the video, feel free to put in a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And remember, I'm gonna have a video coming up really quickly so that we can take what we did today and ditch the keyboard so that we can just do a couple button presses on the front of our cab and get it working like that, which is the ultimate goal. And I'm gonna show you how to do that with something called X Pattern. Till next time, take it easy.